entry into 3D sculpting has never been easier than it is today. I'm gonna teach you a really easy technique that I've been using lately to really make my workflow faster. Halloween is around the corner, let's make a pumpkin. Stretch the sphere, turn on the grid, find the circular array tool. When I duplicate, nothing seems to happen. I tap the original object and move it out. It's duplicated on the circular pattern. Increase the count, it looks like a jacked up basketball. Tap the original sphere and we're gonna squish it down. Adjust the count up and down and see what feels right for the pumpkin. That feels nice. I'm gonna validate and join the children. Voxel Remesh to merge them all together. Now it's only one object in our scene. I smooth out all the little bumps and holes, turn off the grid and this is what we got. On the top, I make this little masking dot and I extract. 0.2 or 0.3 will be my thickness. When I extract it, I have a second object in my scene. Remesh it to give it more details. I want to stretch it out, but not like that. I'm going to mask the whole thing and then unmask the parts I want to move. Only the light areas are going to be affected. With the gizmo, I stretch it up. Pinch the top, voxel remesh again. Give it some organic bend with the move tool. Now that it looks alive, we're going to do the same thing, the circular array in the menu. Don't forget to bookmark this in case you get lost. I increase the count, make it look really busy and clustered. Validate. They're just grouped together, but I voxel merge them. Click the lock and move the anchor point. I can click a line and centered. Lock it back up and I can bend it. The ends are looking like a churro, so I just like smooth them out. Dig a little hole. I used to call churro chorro. I used the box selection tool to mask the whole pumpkin. Tapped unmask so I can make the eyes. Masking brush to make the mouth. I accidentally made some unmasking on the back, so I just masked that back up. Set the thickness to negative 0.3 and extract. Turn off the original object and we have a pumpkin. Actually, it's a jack-o'-lantern. I remesh it. Now I got clean holes. When you're using the gizmo tool, you can use the snap function. I'll do that for the stem. Turn it on and my object will move 90 degrees. Turn the snapping off and I can free move it. Like that. Next, I add texture with the stamp tool. I get my textures from artstation.com. I chose a really subtle texture. It feels like an orange peel. I duplicate the stem, turn the visibility off, and select the mother pumpkin object. The stem is sort of transparent. I box and merge everything together and it creates that cutout. I'll be printing the stem separate from the pumpkin, so it's nice that it has a little spot to sit in. I add a cylinder because I'm going to add a little hole. Turn off the visibility on the cylinder and select the pumpkin, merge it together, and then we have a boolean hole. This is great if you want to add a light inside. After the horns, I turn off symmetry and move the mouth and the eyes. Before I export, I name my layers one body and one stem. With the body selected, I go into the menu and I go to export settings, STL, and select only. Once I have two files, I import it into Prusa Slicer. With both objects in my scene, I do auto arrange. And then I increase the size by 900%. This fills up my whole plate. Turn on organic supports, 0.1 detachable distance. I want to be able to put this over my head, so I slice the object in Prusa Slicer. Now I have a bottom, body, and stem in my scene. It's going to print like this. Back in the day, this print would take many days. I'm using my fastest, largest printer, the Cobra 2 Max. It's 500 millimeters tall. If you're working on big masks like I do, or helmets, this is the go-to printer. Make sure to bookmark this and follow. I make all sorts of tutorials and I don't gatekeep anything.